I want to look at uh, an alternate notation for line integral, vector line integrals, and I want to motivate it a little bit at least by looking at this example. I've got a curve starting here, wandering around, going to here, and remember uh, with this box checked, and we'll understand what this circ means pretty soon, um, with that box checked, the, the green means that we're accumulating positive contributions to the line integral, then zero, then positive, then zero, then negative, and zero, then positive. And I've got a very simple vector field here. It's just 1i plus 0j. And that's for a reason, because I want to illustrate something about this particular line integral and this particular vector field. Um, when I go in the vertical direction, there's no contribution. When I go in the horizontal direction, it just amounts to sort of keeping track of how far I've gone in the horizontal direction. That I get a certain amount based on how far I go along this vector field, and then a certain amount here, and then I cancel out that and a little more, and then I get a bunch more. So that suggests that this particular case, at least, we could write in a little bit of a simpler way. And what I want to claim is that in this case, we're going to be able to write this as an integral with just a dx in it, and um, at least formally, to set it up in a way that makes it look a little bit more like just an ordinary one variable integral. Because it's really keeping track of just how much the x is changing, and the y is pretty much immaterial. It never contributes when the y changes, because it's, that's perpendicular to the direction of the vector field. Now maybe that's just something that works only in a special case. Well, it actually turns out to be to um, to be a, an example of a, a notation we could use in general. So this is called the differential, or a little fancier, the differential form notation for a vector line integral. We're going to treat it mainly as a notation, although. Um, I'll talk about that in a, a little bit more in a minute. So we've got an integral over a curve of a vector field dot dr. Let me bold these suckers to make sure we know their vector fields. Remember, that's that's my the version on the computer or in the book of the arrow, which you should always write over your vectors. So let me just write out, if we were going to parametrize that, which we have to do for most cases, um, to get an explicit answer, although we saw some uh, a, a cool example of doing it just with um, sort of si high degree of symmetry sometimes. If we're going to parametrize that, what do we get? Uh, whoops. We just get, we take f and we express that as a function of x of t, y of t, z of t. Then dr turned into r prime, oh, I erased the r. I wanted to keep that. R prime of t dt. And now I'm going to write that out very, very explicitly. OK, so in fact, let's have a, a pre notation that f, remember, f has three components. f is going to be, let's say, p, and for once I don't want it bold, pi plus qj plus. RK, and we're going to often use that notation, P, Q, and R, meaning the components of our vector field that we happen to be interested in. It would be pretty bad if we were interested in seven vector fields at once, but usually it's just one vector field we're interested in. And so that's going to be, and when we put that in the integral in the dot product, um, let's just write it out in parentheses, quoted. Uh, oh, say R prime is now going to be, well, let's see, what is that? That is dx dt times i, bold, plus the same with z and k and j and y, and then all times dt. OK, so when we take that dot product, that's going to amount to p times dx dt. It's amazing how much mathematics is just cutting and pasting, huh? 
Don't really realize that until you do it on a computer. Okay, so we've taken that dot product. That still should be in parentheses. Okay, so in fact, that's really what you end up calculating. This is the quantity that you mo end up calculating most of the time whenever you have to parameterize. It's really i component of f, q component of, of f, uh, sorry, j component of f, k component of f, that's p, q, and r, times the dx, dt, dy, dt, dz, dt. That's an ex going to be explicit function of t. I, su I suppressed the of x of t, y of t, z of t here because it would just make it really messy. But these are going to be functions we need to express in terms of t. These are explicit functions of t as well. And we've got um, uh, all of that is integrated dt. OK. So what we're going to do is we're just going to come up with a suggestive notation for this, which is it looks like the dt's should cancel here. And we're just going to run with that. And we're just going to call this, and now we, we really need a little spacey here. It doesn't auto space it the right way. Plus r dz. And I'll drop the parentheses. So this is a suggestive notation. It's called the differential form notation for the vector line integral. It has all the data that we need because the data, uh, oh, and I, then I turn it back into a C here because I'm kind of moving back away from the idea of explicitly parameterizing it. And so these two notations are two equivalent notations that you'll see very often. You either talk about the vector field as a whole and talk about kind of a more geometric idea of it, or this one is closer to the actual calculation you end up doing. And that's the nice advantage. For us, it's, it's really, um, the only advantage for us for doing this, as I said, we're thinking of it as a notation. I should say that there's a way to make this into a very geometric and very meaningful sort of con concept, conceptual uh, version of integration, and it is the more sophisticated version. But we're not really going to do that. We're, but we're going to use it as a convenient notation. So it's just going to be um, the P, Q, and R. You can think of as the I, J, K components of the vector field. And so if somebody asks you, calculate this integral, what I'd like you to do is to think of it as, oh, that's just a notation for the integral of the vector field with the components being pi plus qj plus rk. But the advantage of it is that there's just one short step just to go from here back to here. And that gives you the, the idea of how to parameterize it right away. You just put dt's under these guys, and then you put a dt out here to cancel it, and you've got your explicit formula right off the bat. So here it was one, two, three steps to get to the explicit formula. Here it's just one step. So it's a, it's a nice advantage in terms of the notation. And so that's what, um, what how we're going to think of that. So that's in the, if the book asks us to do an integral like this, if you want to think about what are we really calculating? What's the geometry here? Think about it in terms of a vector field. If you, you want to think, how do I do this? Just do this and you'll be fine. So back to the, um, that graphical example. If we did a really simple example, would be where f, instead of having all this stuff, is just i. Then what kind of integral are we taking? Then the integral of that vector field over a curve, if we write it out with the differential form notation, in principle it's going to be this whole thing, but it's really just going to be the integral of over the curve of dx. And that does suggest what I was claiming is that all that really matters here is on along the curve, how does x change? This basically adds up little bits of changes in x. So that's another way. It's, it's a way to kind of approach the conceptual formulation of this. The idea here is, I don't know why it deletes the curve when I go away from the window. The idea is that on each of the little bits of the, of the curve, I don't actually measure the length of the curve. I just measure on each little bit, how much did x change? And I add up all those things. So if I add up how much x changed, how much x changed, how much x changed, how much x changed, I'm going to get a bunch of stuff here that's indicated by the green. If you're right here, that's going to contribute very little. Here it's going to contribute some negative, because as I go along, x is changing negatively. And then here it's going to start changing positively again. So that's another way to think about what this notation is telling us, is that as we go along the curve, we s slice it up into pieces and only pay attention to how much x is changing. In general, what we do is we slice up the curve and we pay attention to how much all the variables are changing. 
and multiply them by some sorts of coefficients which themselves can be changing at the same time. That gets a bit more complicated. That's why I kind of looked at that example as, as a motivator.